Hi, Budit. Um, it's uh, it's great. Uh, Hello, Frank. Great talking to you, and uh, and thanks again for for doing this. I know uh, I know the situation in the Philippines is um, is pretty bad at the moment, so it's it's great you taking the time to talk to us. Yes, thank you so much uh, to you and PNI for uh, for making this uh, this uh, these interviews possible, and also uh, to be able for us to be able to um, bring forward the situation in the Philippines and uh, also uh, what. Uh, uh, various stakeholders around the world uh, can do to help no? um, our situation. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I want to ask you actually, I want to start to ask you about your, your personal situation. Uh, I know you've had um, issues with even getting back to the Philippines following a, a trip to Europe recently. You received uh, threats from, from the government. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Well, um, actually, um, not exactly threats from the government, uh, but uh, you see, uh, this administration has actually put in place a very well-oiled um, and a very uh, efficient um, a propaganda machinery. So when Duterte um, assumed office uh, in June last year, uh, they actually deployed propagandists um, here in the Philippines, as well as um, uh, in various parts of uh, the world, uh, where uh, you have huge concentrations of Filipino migrants. Uh, you see, Filipino migrant workers are actually uh, an important support base uh, for this president uh, because uh, they are sort of uh, decision makers in the family, no? Uh, remitting um, dollars. Uh, so our economy is actually dependent on um, the um, uh, the remittances of our overseas Filipino workers, no? Um, and so uh, it's important that uh, his popularity is sustained there amongst the uh, Filipinos abroad also. Um, this uh, administration has also made full use of uh, um, government's information and news agencies, no? Uh, to sustain um, this president's skill and anti-human rights rhetoric. So uh, both online and offline, um, this uh, propaganda machinery actually sustains that culture of bullying and lynch mob uh, uh, methods uh, by um, those who provide um, active consensus uh, to uh, to uh, President Duterte's rule, no. So um, he took advantage of a very disoriented and frustrated public, and uh, that is what uh, enables him to operate on a still on a very strong support base. And um, yeah, the attacks that I've uh, received, that also other human rights uh, defenders receive here in the Philippines is from this uh, propaganda machinery, no? Um, uh, sanctioned by, uh, by this government. So, um, so the, overall, the overall situation for, for human rights and uh, environmental defenders in uh, Mindanao and elsewhere is pretty terrible right now, right? Yes, um, actually, um, uh, the uh, extrajudicial killings and forced disappearances and torture, the gravest forms of human rights violations, uh, were there even before Duterte. Um, actually, they, uh, uh, as um, uh, Professor Philip Alston, the former special rapporteur on extrajudicial killings, um, uh, said uh, during his visit to the Philippines that while uh, the Philippines has an admirable um, has undertaken admirable efforts um, to, um, towards the respect, protection, and fulfillment of human rights, there still is a, uh, uh, a strong undercurrent of lawlessness, meaning that uh, uh, the state itself has um, been uh, making use of, uh, of vigilante groups and non-state armed groups um, to, um, yeah, to uh, stifle dissent and uh, eliminate opposition. No? So, of course, uh, the Philippines, I think, ranks number two 
um, as as uh, the most hazardous for those uh, um, yeah uh, protecting the environment, no? So environmental activists, uh, and so uh, that has been carried over. Uh, that has not stopped uh, during the Duterte administration. The difference is that um, this uh, government, uh, President Duterte, has uh, put in place this. Uh, permission structure for mass murder, and that's actually, um, yeah, defined this particular section of Philippine society, drug dependents and petty drug peddlers, worthy of uh, elimination. Um, but also, um, while uh, this uh, impoverished sector is being attacked, he has also, um, together with the propaganda machinery I have mentioned, um, actually prepared uh, public acceptance of uh, a possible, um, yeah, attack of uh, of human rights defenders. So it's a a very tensioning situation for all types of agents of change in the Philippines uh, because he has defined human rights activists as the enemies of the state, as those who protect criminals and those who are. Uh, um, who prevent um, development. So, um, yeah, with a huge chunk of the population being uh, misled, uh, being misinformed, um, there is actually, um, we are afraid, uh, a permission uh, for a total crackdown of um, all sorts of activists. And now with the total breakdown of peace talks, uh, with the big left looming, um, this actually, when this happens, this actually uh, puts at risk all um, uh, all sorts of activists, you know, all kinds of people working towards change in the Philippines, because the state machine will not uh, will not discriminate uh, who is with the left or not. Uh, all of us will be seen as uh, part of of the big left, no? So. Uh, this is a, 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 a precarious uh, situation for us uh, at this point in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned the, the support uh, Duterte enjoys in, in the sort of overall population. And uh, I was reading a, a poll of uh, Fieldstar Global recently, which said that 80% um, yes. uh, of the population was, you know, had uh, high trust in Duterte. How do you explain this? Is it, on, is it only because of the propaganda, or how do you explain such, um, you know, support? <coughs> um, well, uh, just just to start off, um, there's this uh, survey released on October eighth by Pulse Asia that actually reveals a sharp decline uh, in his popularity. No? Um, of course, um, he's still very much popular as the survey revealed. Uh, but uh, it also, the survey also shows that um, uh, a huge number of Filipinos actually um, do, not, um, do not trust, no? um, have doubts uh, about the uh, validity of, uh, of the uh, claims of the police that uh, uh, everybody, uh, they were engaging uh, arresting fought back. So uh, that means that uh, the uh, war on drugs popularity is losing traction. And um, yeah, uh, President Duterte's um, uh, uh, popularity is, uh, is slowly declining as well. Um, his popularity is, uh, as we perceive it, uh, quite hyperinflated, you no? Know? Um, and um, it's uh, actually the efficiency of this propaganda machinery um, that um, uh, that bloats um, his popularity amongst uh, amongst uh, the Filipinos. Uh, we believe that there is a huge silent majority uh, because of the climate of fear that he has put in place. Uh, but to really explain um, why. Um, a significant number of Filipinos um, actually um, uh, came to rely 
on President Duterte um, is because of the people's uh, frustration for 30 years. No, um, uh, we should uh, uh, trace uh, the problem back to the Edsa Revolution in 1986, which promised radical social reforms, the equitable redistribution of the nation's wealth, um, and uh, and most importantly, the democratization of essential services and opportunities. Uh, these uh, are actually requirements for uh, all Filipinos uh, to get out of poverty. Uh, but these promises um, never took place. Uh, and so the five regimes uh, before Duterte actually never delivered um, um, uh, yeah, essentially, um, uh, the essentials of a life of dignity for everyone. And thus, um, yeah, it is the accumulated frustration of, of the people that actually, um, yeah, um, made them put their hopes on um, even this, um, this, uh, this populist uh, yet violent president, no? And um, a second uh, um, reason would be that his cornerstone program, Drugs and Crime, the most affected by these issues are also the most impoverished sections of Philippine society, no? The poorest of the poor not being able to gate themselves up in uh, private subdivisions or pay for private security. And, um, yeah, essentially... Um, that is why uh, so many Fili Filipinos disgruntled um, and, um, yeah, frustrated with an inoperable criminal justice system actually have come to subscribe to, to this alternative justice dispensation system that this president is offering, no? So it's just, just like uh, any other, uh, um, yeah, a government policy that is good on paper, but in practice is inoperable. Um, Filipinos are just willing to uh, uh, to uh, take on and accept the alternative and uh, turn their heads around and just let it happen. No, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's important to let Filipinos know the importance of due process and the importance of the transparency and checks and balances that our um, still uh, dysfunctional criminal justice system has to offer. It's really repairing um, this dysfunctional criminal justice system that is, uh, is the answer um, together with uh, yeah, investing in a life of dignity for everyone. Can you actually talk uh, um, briefly about the war on drugs? Because it's called the war on drugs. But it seems like the the big drug laws are, are not affected at all. But but this war on drugs, right? Yes, uh, actually, um, yeah. Based on the patterns that we've seen uh, since his assumption into office, um, uh, the uh, the uh, drug war or operations of the police and vigilantes seem to be confined in the most impoverished. Um, urban poor communities in the Philippines. Um, yeah, essentially, there's a double standard in implementation. When it comes to private subdivisions, um, they undertake um, leafleting, no? And information campaigns uh, against illegal drugs. But when it comes to the most impoverished urban poor communities, uh, they uh, simply undertake violent uh, and hard-lined operations, kicking down doors, and yeah, um, uh, and 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 uh, yeah, shooting people directly without without arresting them. So uh, this has been this has been the pattern for for since June um, uh, last year. So um, essentially, uh, it's sad that uh, instead of um, uh, providing the most basic services and access to opportunities to those uh, most neglected 
uh, and the most forgotten during the past administrations, uh, this uh, president chooses to assault the most brutalized people in Philippine society. So, so you, you've spoken about the propaganda of the government, uh, the fact that he's got the media on its side, uh, the, the somehow support he enjoys, oh. you know. And um, uh, I wanted to ask you um, how the alliance among movements is um, developing its strategies to address to address this in the Philippines. Yeah. Well, um, just a correction. Actually, um, uh, his he is making use of government's uh, news and information agencies. Uh, in the Philippines, we still enjoy a strong uh, independent media. Actually, the courageous ones, um, uh, journalists and reporters, actually, um, the night shifts, as we refer to them, actually, um, still courageously documenting um, uh, the killings, no? Uh, and um, also providing the independent figures uh, as compared to the figures that uh, the, the skewed figures now that the police is is uh, putting forward, um, yeah. But uh, essentially, uh, this uh, these government news agencies, uh, uh, together with uh, the other sections of this propaganda arm, have actually mastered the art of uh, yeah um, shaping uh, public opinion and um, manipulating uh, the truth, spreading fake news, uh, lies, and half-truths, no? Uh, so, yeah, it's it's actually an information war, no? A war of narratives and um, really um, uh, uh, various, uh, various um, independent and genuine news agencies uh, trying to counter... Um, yeah, the, the narrative and the framing of being put forward by uh, Duterte's propaganda arm. But um, now referring to um, the social movements here in the Philippines, um, it is only now that uh, uh, the process of unification um, has um, effectively begun. No, um, uh, In the past months, um, uh, there was quite a disappointing period of, um, yeah, uh, us having a disunited uh, social movement, no? Uh, the left, for example, um, being, uh, being uh, disorganized, no? Uh, some, some progressives here in the Philippines actually continue to lend legitimacy to this violent precedent, unfortunately. Um, and so it's it's a matter of, I would categorize uh, progressives here in the Philippines as one, those who are still um, uh, engaging no? uh, the Duterte administration, and there's another uh, section that is uh, already um, uh, working towards um, uh, defending, opposing, and uh, resisting uh, this regime, no, and its uh, its violent policies. Uh, but uh, yeah, even before Duterte, uh, the problem is really that uh, the left is quite disunited, no. Um, in the early 90s, um, the Philippine left uh, began to break up. So you have um, uh, various splinters. And it's, yeah, uh, now actually a necessary but difficult task of uh, the broader left to actually unite and uh, provide that critical opposition effectively. Uh, to 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 uh, to uh, the rise of tyranny, and uh, yeah, the 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 relapse into um, into dictatorship. Thanks. Finally, I wanted to ask you: 
Uh, what about the role of international solidarity? Uh, what what should be outside of the of the Philippines are uh, uh, our role in in supporting you guys? Well, uh, yeah, given the shrinking space in the Philippines, um, it's uh, becoming more difficult for us to uh, to actually um, uh, operate and um, and actually uh, express dissent, no. And uh, more and more, it has it has become crucial to actually revive what once was a strong solidarity movement for the Philippines. You see, uh, uh, more and more have come to uh, see that uh, this Duterte juncture is not actually a uh, a separate episode. Um, in Philippine history with the Marcos dictatorship. This is actually a relapse or, or a resurgence of um, what we failed to quell in 1986. No? In 1986, um, uh, what appeared to have been a, a people's revolution um, was actually a bourgeois, um, was actually a revolution that was hijacked um, uh, by the elite. No? Um, and uh, thus, uh, another elite actually um, took the place of Marcos and his cronies. And we were never able to Uh, overturn an oppressive and exploitative setup. Uh, so we started to, of course, regain our um, dem some democratic space. Uh, but uh, yeah, we were actually never able to hold uh, the perpetrators of the Marcos dictatorship to account. Um, uh, actually, uh, the first president after Marcos, the late uh, President Corazon Aquino, um, uh, Noinoy Aquino's mother, no? um, her, her tact was actually uh, peace and reconciliation. And so, um, yeah, we were never able to um, go through what is referred to as transitional justice, Uh, and actually institute a truth commission to actually inst uh, institutionalize what really happened during the Marcos dictatorship. And so, yeah, uh, this enabled the Marcoses to actually uh, stage a well-orchestrated political resurgence. So, uh, and so, yeah, Uh, the Marcoses actually uh, are one of the among the main funders of President Duterte, and President Duterte actually, um, yeah, is is supporting uh, the uh, the uh, vice possible vice presidency of uh, the son of uh, the late dictator, no? Uh, so Bongbong Marcos, uh, and so we should uh, all see. Uh, this Duterte juncture as a sort of continuation of the Marcos dictatorship, no? uh, a revival of the Marcos dictatorship. And uh, in uh, many respects, uh, what Duterte is doing now uh, is uh, quite similar to, uh, to um, uh, what Marcos did. And um, yeah, uh, essentially, uh, so yeah, Uh, so uh, activists of the past, those uh, who uh, were members of the Solidarity Network during the time of the Marcos dictatorship, uh, should actually uh, pursue uh, what they started. No, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, international solidarity work is important, and uh, yeah, um, not just in uh, bringing out uh, the truth on what is happening in the Philippines, uh, 
uh, but also uh, to help strengthen uh, Filipino organizations uh, uh, countering uh, the nascent dictatorship in the Philippines, uh, as well as addressing uh, the human rights crisis, which is being used as a tool um, to, to advance authoritarian rule. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Budit. Um, yeah, thanks again for, for yes. doing this. Yes, very much welcome, Frank. Yes, thank you so much also for having me.